Hi there, I'm Cheryl Waters, and you're listening to Live on KEXP at Home, and I am beyond delighted to introduce one of my favorite musicians in the world, Spencer Krug. Hi, Spencer. How you doing? Hello, Cheryl. I'm well. How are you? I'm great. I love that backdrop there. Where, where are you hanging today? Uh, I'm in my little I'm in my little studio uh, at home. Uh, it's situated in my backyard. It was a woodshed, and it's now a little tiny music studio that built it last year, I think. And you're you're up on Vancouver Island, right? Yeah. I'm like an hour north of Victoria. Okay. I read an interview where someone mentioned that you were in Vancouver, and I was thinking they must have met Vancouver Island, because I know you don't live in Vancouver proper. No, not anymore. I did it one time. But I think a lot of people make that mistake, because why wouldn't you assume that Vancouver, the city, is on Vancouver Island, right? Absolutely. But it's it's not. That's one of those intricacies that only the locals really catch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Well, I have to say, I'm so excited about your new record. Fading Graffiti came out on April 16th. And thank you so much for creating these great videos for KEXP. Want to jump in and watch a couple and then chat some? Yes, let's do that. All right. Here is the title track, Fading Graffiti. It's Spencer Krug live on KEXP at home.
That's Spencer Krug live on KEXP at home. Spencer, that is such a cozy setup. I love those videos. Where did you record those? Um, thanks. Those are recorded uh, at the Noise Floor Recording Studio, or just the Noise Floor. It's on Gabriela Island. Um, it's the same studio that the record was recorded in, Fading Graffiti, like the, the original LP. And uh, the guy playing guitar, Jordan Coop, is the he runs the studio with his partner Terry. Um, he also engineered and produced the record, and then he ended up playing guitar on the record, and now he ended up doing these sessions with us. But yeah, noise floor. What were the recording sessions like? I mean, it must have been great getting back together with some friends to play music together. It was. It was the first time. I played music with, I think, with anyone since the pandemic started. Definitely with more than one person. Um, it was cool. We had to sort of reinvent the songs for a third time. The record is sort of a reinvention of piano ballads that I put on Patreon uh, throughout 2019, and we sort of reworked those with a full band. And then for these sessions, um, it's the same drummer and the same guitarist that you see in these videos, but we couldn't get the bass player, Adrian Humblet, or the steel player, Nick Merz, over the border because they're both American. There's still travel restrictions. So the three of us reworked them kind of for a third time for these sessions, which was a fun exercise and kind of works. You've reimagined many of your songs with different instrumentation throughout your career. What is it about these specific songs that inspired you to transform them to these full band versions for this album? And I'm curious to know, how do you go about doing that? Um, I wanted to make the, the piano songs from 2019 more accessible, I guess, for lack of a better expression. Uh, when I write on piano, my compositions are kind of fussy and intricate because that's just what I do on piano. So I rewrote them on guitar and then brought in a band to just sort of rockify them um, because I knew I wanted to make an album of those songs, but I didn't want to just cut and paste what I had already posted online to a piece of vinyl. I wanted to, to see what else they could be if they were sort of dumbed down a bit. Um, because I really like playing rock music. It's just if I'm making solo music, then I probably am doing stuff on keys and I end up being you know, like a little more intricate, like I said. Um, the process is, it's, it's really fun and fascinating to watch the way a song can become an entirely different beast when you add other instruments and other brains. Um, I'm, I'm really a fan of letting other people sort of do whatever they want. You just, you know, find people that you respect and trust um, and be like, here's a song, what would you do with it? And then we just, everyone sort of writes their own parts put it together and that's that is what the record ended up being I'm, I'm not like dictating notes to people you know I'm just writing my own parts um, so it's just a fun experiment really and I think it turned out okay I will do more of it in the future I hope you are a longtime collaborator with people. So it's interesting that a lot of your work, especially the piano work, I think of, and I could be wrong, it's just a perception of mine, is that you're working very solitary um, and in your own head. But then when I look at your career, you've collaborated with so many people. I mean, clearly you love, um, I'm imagining the energy around that, um, the give and take among partners. I think of all the people that you've worked with over the years. And uh, it's clearly something that feeds your music. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, I, that that would be true of most musicians, I think, is that because music is such a special, unique language um, in and of itself that the only musicians can speak, I guess. It sounds sort of stupid to say, but, you know, you find a musician that you can have those conversations with. Uh, it's a special energy that you can only create in that circumstance when you're playing with people that you are sincerely interested in their ideas and um, and trying to complement their ideas with your own. Um, you know, not just adding bass and drums because you want more low end in a beat, but really uh, bringing in other minds to contribute to an overall shape. If that makes sense. Well, I think of um, when you moved to Finland, or actually, do you pronounce Sinai? The is that the how you pronounce the band? Well, they pronounce it Sinai, so Sinai. that's how I pronounce it because it's their band. But the, yeah, it's just how the Finns pronounce Sinai. Sinai. Sinai, and you did a couple of. Um, records with them, which I think are so beautiful. And I know that Miko has returned to the band. In fact, we had Joe Ensu, 1685, in for a live on KEXP session earlier this year. Yeah, I saw and that. Do you see yourself collaborating with those musicians in the future? I mean, do people just kind of come in and out of your life that you work with? Um, I would love to work with those guys again and... I assume that they would say the same, you know. It, the only reason we're not making music together right now is just geography. Um, and yes, like lots of people and collaborators do come in and out of my life, but I think that's just because I've been doing this for a couple of decades now. I think that's totally natural. And, you know, there's no real bad blood or anything with anyone I ever worked with I would work again with any any one of those people it's just you know people come together when the circumstances are right there's a time and place for a certain collaboration and then both people move away from each other back out into the world and uh, you just do it when it when it feels right yeah, you've moved around a little bit. I mean, I don't know your full history, but obviously you're from British Columbia and you've lived in Montreal. I know about the time you spent in Finland and you're back home now in BC. Do mm -hmm. you feel pretty settled and content there these days? I definitely feel settled and I don't know if I feel content, if that makes sense. I feel very much... Um, here I'm very I'm very uh, established on this island right now, um, and that is I've lived we've lived in this house longer than I've ever lived anywhere. Um, I got a kid now. I mean, there's lots of things that are sort of fixing me to this place uh, in a way that is new to me, like relatively new to me, um, and. It's not that I'm discontent, I just, I'm still exploring emotionally what it means to be a grown-up, basically, <laughs> and, and staying in one place and uh, having a routine and being a father. It's all great. I mean, I love all of it. It's just all really new. A lot of these songs are about that, right, of just sort of deciding uh, how and who to be and can you, can we really change ourselves from our past selves into some quote unquote better version in the present, it, you know, when needed and what that entails like emotionally. Um, so uh, the short answer to your question is I'll probably be here for a while, but I'm very much looking forward to 
the pandemic ending and getting back on the road so that I can experience, you know, cities and other cultures again. Vancouver Island is, um, it's got really beautiful nature. Uh, I'll say that. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> okay. Well, you can, we've all been getting a little bit restless and definitely every single musician I've spoken to in the last year plus, you know, with touring being such a big part of, for many of them, their entire adult lives, um, they're they're really restless <laughs> yeah. right now. So yeah. I'm sure that you will find... Um, that you will be very content when you can start that back up again. Well, let's listen to some more music right now. I'm talking to Spencer Krug. We're live on KEXP at Home, the new album, Fading Graffiti. And this song's called Pin a Wing Above the Door. Had a good time just hanging around the house with you all month. I'm not moving anymore. I felt actual peace and I felt actual love. Pin a wing above the door. A bathtub and a laptop showing shows that we've both seen. I'm not moving anymore. Getting high and painting watercolors for each other Pin a wing above the door And hold the other to the mirror And makes a different kind of wingspan A book we've opened to the center A second half that we have yet to understand snow for hours just so we could throw a party I'm not moving anymore Selling out my music just in case we have a baby Pin a wing above the door And sleeping by the fire by the dark in the day I'm not moving anymore Crying to the radio while driving to the lake Kind of wingspan, a book we've opened to the center, a second half that we have yet to understand, in a wing above the door, in a wing above the door, in a wing above the door. All bright angel park called for us on Christmas Day A ring around the moon like a jewel on New Year's Eve the estuary Just us and the dog We were all as still as stones I'm not moving anymore So pin a wing above the door 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 Makes a different kind of wingspan A book we've opened to the center A second half that we have yet to
My muscles are fine It's in my fucking bones Let me lean into the line I mean the ocean is only as deep as the fire that goes But it goes on down And I'm old now The surface is quiet The sunshine has shown My muscles are fine it's in my fucking bones Let me lean into the line I mean my fathers were into carving shit in stone You look good in the way you wear the fabric of time I just tie it to the post And hope that the wind blows me back to 2009 My muscles are fine It's in my fucking bones listening to Spencer Krug live on KEXP at home. Spencer, I don't want to embarrass you, but I have always loved your voice so much and it is so distinctive. Can you tell me just a little bit about when you began singing? Is that something that you did when you were a kid? I mean, when did music come into your life and how did that take shape? Um, first of all, thanks. That's nice. Um, I started playing music when I was about 12 uh, with piano. I started piano lessons at about that age uh, because I asked for piano lessons. My parents were kind of of the mind that if I, if I wanted to do it, uh, then it would come naturally, and, and it did. Um, and then I played music all throughout my teenage years, and dabbled in like shitty punk bands uh by the time i got into my later teens um the keyboards didn't really fit into that world so i got into like playing bass and guitar a little bit because those were cooler um but i never really stopped playing piano 
And then I did actually kind of quit music altogether in my early 20s for whatever reason. I just lost interest. So there's about two years where I didn't pick up an instrument. And then I, when I started again, basically Wolf Parade started. I didn't start singing until I was in Wolf Parade. I'd never sung in a band at all. Well, that's not totally true. I sang in a a band when I was a teenager, um, but I don't I don't even want to say the name of the band because I'm so embarrassed about it. And I don't really count that as like a worthwhile learning experience. <laughs> it was fun, but like I said, not like I didn't take it very seriously. I didn't sing seriously until Wolf Parade started. Well, I find that. I find that kind of interesting because you also have another very strong vocalist in Wolf Parade, so you didn't have to sing in that band. Um, so what what made you decide to start singing then? Right. I don't know, because originally the if Dan was going to be the singer and I was just going to play keyboards. Um, we you know, became friends in Victoria when we were both living there, and then when we both moved to Montreal, we talked for a while about starting a band and he was like yeah I've got songs and I was like yeah I can play keyboards but within I think two rehearsals I decided I wanted to sing too I don't I don't really know why I guess I was just jealous that he got to sing so <laughs> good enough reason I mean and he was open to it and uh, it made the band I think more unique, I guess, right off the bat that there was two singers on stage. And we both always, like since then, always liked that aspect of the band, that there's two singers and that we can bounce back and forth in that way. I think the fans would agree. Um, Well, thank you for sharing all of that with me. Yeah. You seem to be a bit ahead of the curve as an artist releasing your music on Patreon since, I want to say, 2019. Yeah. How how has it benefited you to move from the traditional release plans, especially in the wake of the pandemic? Well, it's been, it's, it's been good. Like, I just feel really lucky that for whatever reason, I started Patreon in 2019 and then sort of built this foundation over the course of that year so that by the time the pandemic hit, it was pretty easy for me to pivot to an exclusively online career. Um, Except for live streams, which I am still quite bad at doing i've done a few of them now um but i don't love them uh that's kind of besides the point patreon has been really great for me um i really like having that direct access to fans um who can just message me directly and we chat back and forth i really like that i can I don't have to wait to release a song. I will quite often finish mixing a song the night before and then master it in the morning and then post it that evening so that it's it's, it's as new to the audience as it is to me, which um, is something that's always frustrated me about the music industry is the, the huge gap between when a song is done and when it's released. Um, So that's been really cool. Well, most of what I know about Patreon, I learned from Amanda Palmer, who I think is fair to say is a super user of Patreon. And from what I can tell, there isn't a set template for how to use it. The platform really gives you a lot of freedom and leaves a lot of space for creativity. And as you said, connection to directly interact with your fans in unlimited and unexpected ways. And you really put a lot of stuff up there. How how are the ways that you've been utilizing it? I put up, I try to put up a a new song every month. Uh, And so far I haven't missed a month. 
Um, and that's fun because I'm always writing. So it just gives me a place to put my ideas and my energy. Like right away, I, as soon as I have an idea, I know that I can build that into a song that I will release at the end of the month. Um, and then I put up like old B-sides and like forgotten recordings from the past that wouldn't have otherwise seen the light of day. I do covers sometimes. Um, I do improvised music, which is something I would never otherwise release or perform in the world. Um, but yeah, it just provides this kind of freedom, like you say, to do whatever I want. So I'm, I'm really just reveling in that and taking advantage of it. Um, I'm even writing short stories for people now, and I will mail you my short stories if you want. But I mean, it's all, it's great. It feels like a real, it's a straight game to me. This It's a really, it's very straightforward. There's different tiers that you can join and there's a subscription fee. And I just like how there's no middlemen. And it's like, you give me a dollar and I give you a song. You know, not to be crass, but it, that sort of straightforward exchange is refreshing after, you know, a couple decades in the music industry where uh, the path between you and your the money that you earn is filled with obstacles <laughs> often. Yeah, I mean, do you even earn money <laughs> off of your records these days? I think, and you know, on paper, they say, they say that they do. <laughs> it's, um, there's a long, yeah, who knows? Who knows? Well, what's it like to have to write a song every month? It doesn't sound like you can overthink things too much. No, that's the beauty of it. Because that is the thing that I've wrecked so many songs doing. It's just overthinking. Um, and I think a lot of artists could say the same thing that you're most excited about a song, you know, while you write it. And then as soon as it's finished, and then if you have time to stew on it and overthink it, it's a good chance you'll go back and kind of wreck it, like try to redo it and you lose the magic, you know, um, and I, I don't have time to do that with Patreon. I really, like, there's, writing a song a month isn't that difficult. There's still a whole month to do it, and I record it in here, and I mix it and master it online. There's time, but there's not time to scrap it and start over again. I have to sort of pick an idea fairly early in the month and just follow it through and follow kind of all my first instincts. Um, and that's a really cool way to work for me and to be able to, to have that excuse to be like, no, I can't, I can't choose a different direction right now. I have to keep going with my original idea, you know, for better or for worse. Some of the songs up there are like, I'm the first to admit it's like some of it is not my best work, but some of it is. So, and I just post all of it. I don't, um, I really try not to self self edit with what goes on Patreon. I'm sure it's fun for the people who follow you and subscribe. They can. It's almost like they can watch. You know, you're workshopping things. I, I I'm wondering when you're writing songs this way, they don't necessarily need to be cohesive or connected to one another. I would imagine. So, how does that affect putting an album together? Like putting an album together out of the songs on Patreon? Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing maybe the songs from, well, I know the songs from Fading Graffiti were written some time ago, but moving forward, you'll want to release new albums. And if you're continuing to do this, how, how, will, how will those songs come together, do you imagine? I don't know. I think I will do more of, you know reworking some of the material with other players uh, either to take on the road 
or to make another album. But I might also do just some, like a kind of best of thing. Uh, after this year, there's like three years of stuff up there. Um, oh, that's right. 2019 was three I years know, ago. Right? That's nuts. I know the last two years. Well, it's so uh, it's so. I guess there's two and a half years of stuff. Um, I might just put the put my favorites on a record, and I have no problem with songs being disparate, different from one another. Um, I think that's apparent even when I try to make a cohesive album, it's often kind of all over the place anyway. So uh, I'm okay if it's a record of a bunch of different stuff. Has revisiting the songs on Fading Graffiti months, even years after they were written, taken on a new meaning since COVID? Yeah. Well, of this particular group of songs that we did for this session, I was thinking about them and they're all kind of about, um, grappling with the past and memory and a certain version or interpretation of yourself that you think you are. And then like reconciling that with the present and the kind of person that you need to be in order to be a good person. Um, and in one way or another, all of those songs are about that. Um, a couple of them specifically are about kind of staying in one spot or the idea of like settling down. I'm thinking of River River and Pinnowing Above the Door. Pinnowing Above the Door especially is about like the, the sort of sense of peace that I didn't know could exist in myself that I got from just staying in one spot uh, with loved ones and, and sort of just calming down, settling down. Um, and it was a really beautiful new feeling. Sorry, you might hear some horses in the background. Actually, and I also hear those beautiful birds. Yeah. I live in the country, so it's, it's nice, but... Are the horses galloping by? I don't... No, those are dogs. <laughs> <laughs> the, dogs are, the dogs are probably just barking at the birds. I don't see any horses at the moment. They don't do a lot of galloping. They do a lot of standing around and eating grass. They're not my horses, for the record. It sounds very bucolic. It is. Yeah, it's, I, it's weird, speaking of like settling down. I feel like I've retired in a lot of ways, and I wasn't ready to do that. Even though I'm a new father and I'm working like harder than I ever have, there's something about my lifestyle that feels like that of a retiree. And uh, it's just weird to to accept that. I'm in my forties now, it's, but I didn't expect to live in a place like this until like another 20 years. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that song pinning, pinning wing above the door is kind of about that, like accepting this quiet quietude and then, um, reveling in the, the peace that comes with it. But to answer your question about the pandemic, like that was written pre pandemic that was written like late 2019. And the whole song is about like staying inside <laughs> and like not and not seeing anyone except like your loved one. Uh, and then it was kind of funny that it was released in the middle of a pandemic when everyone was probably not super keen on that idea anymore. By like April of this year, they probably didn't want to hear about how rad it was to stay inside and not go out. Um, it's just kind of funny. I don't think it changes the song too much. Well, even though it sounds like you're keen to get on the road and let loose a little bit, it I think it's I would imagine that one of the silver linings of staying at home as a new father, which 
by the way, congratulations. I'm Thank so you. happy for you. But the opportunity to be at home with your family during this precious time after the birth of a child and not have to go out on tour, that has to have been a gift. Yeah, it was. It was um, serendipitous. I wouldn't have really wanted to tour in 2020 anyway. I would have, I literally would have toured as little as possible. Uh, and it turns out it was impossible to tour anyway. So I, you know, there's only a handful of days that I've been away from the kid, which is great. And uh, when touring does start up again, that will be a whole new like emotional ball of wax to deal with, but we'll figure it out. I mean, that's what musicians have to do, right? Got to go on the road. Yeah. Well, do you think you'll continue to do things like live streaming after you begin touring again? A combo of the two? Maybe in the future, but to be honest, I'm thinking I'm going to do my last live stream for a while in July. Um, because live music is coming back to some extent and because I don't like to perform the same songs twice on live streams because it's not, it's not like a live show, right? It's like a, it's documented on the internet. Um, and I want to keep it new and exciting for the people that tune in because it's more or less the same audience each time. Right. Um, I'm kind of running out of things I can play, to be honest. And uh, I don't find them super relaxing. Uh, I really like that the technology exists to do some form of a live performance for people. Um, But I don't think I enjoy it enough to to keep going indefinitely so i'm taking a a break from live streams i I might step back into it you know in another year or something but i'm I'm gonna give myself a little live stream sabbatical well the right news is the option will always be there if and when you want to pick it up again yeah hopefully unless there's like a post-apocalyptic power out and then good thing i know how to play piano (laughs) <laughs> then it's just you and the horses and yeah, the birds the, and your family the neighbors and the can dogs. wander in with their carts full of potatoes to trade for a couple songs in the back studio <laughs> do you have a garden out there in your farm life no not yet uh sort of G- growing some garlic we definitely have like the the ability to grow vegetables um the time to grow vegetables hasn't really happened in our life yet, but it will. All right. Well, let's listen to some more music. It's Spencer Krug live on KEXP at home. This last song, The Men Are Called Horsemen There. Has professed to me in Spain with their eyes. I'm sorry, cause somebody told me to watch, and I watched for it all over Spain with my eyes. I'm sorry, then so are you, cause I, I go where you tell me to. On horseshoes, the Casanova ran toward the eastern land. 
cock was in his hand You gotta ride away from him You gotta ride away from him But if you ride away If I was you If I was a horse I would throw up the reins If I was you oh, 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 oh. If I was a horse I would throw up the reins If I was you Such ways never to stay in my trip today Where if someone says fuck me, someone else says oh On Atlantic of such We would Says fuck me, someone else says okay.
That's Spencer Krug live on KEXP at Home, another song from the new album, Fading Graffiti. Spencer, you created your own record label, Pronounced Krug. How's that been? Um, challenging. Um, it's really, really steep learning curve, but it's been good. Uh, I, I just wanted to create a very small, simple vehicle with which I could put my own vinyl into the world for my own, my own music. It won't be, you know, it won't be like signing other bands or anything. It's a, it's the world's smallest record label. Um, and so far so good. It's been fun. I've never really cared too much about that side of the industry. Uh, admittedly, just because I didn't know anything about it and it didn't really concern me, I could just send the songs to a label and they would turn it into a record, uh, which I thought was cool, but not... I, I, didn't really understand uh, kind of how interesting it is. And that learning that has been fun. Well, I absolutely love the new record, Fading Graffiti. Thank you so much for sharing these songs with us. And that last video, by the way, was epic, the, that song. The Sunset Rubdown song. Yeah, that's not actually a Fading Graffiti song. That was one that's an old Sunset Rubdown song. Oh, uh, how did I not catch that? It's the the men are called horsemen there. Yeah, what's that on? I thought that, I knew your discography like the back of my hand. It's on the first Sunset Rubdown record, which we're finally going to put on vinyl this fall. Dragon Slayer? No, uh, it's called Shut Up I Am Dreaming. Okay. Uh, which has never been on vinyl, and oh no, wait, Dragon Slayer was the last one. Yes. The first one, some fans have been quite adamant for years about getting it on vinyl, and we finally figured it out, and we'll put it out. If all goes to plan, it'll come out late fall, unpronounced Krug. Uh, and probably the same fans have also been adamant about me covering that song for years. I don't really know what it is about that song that that gets these people so riled up, but uh, they've been really kind of beating down my door to put a version out there. So I thought it'd be fun to do with these guys. And I want to shout out to um, Jordan Coop, the guitarist in the video. He's playing like basically note for note the guitar part that Jordan Robson Kramer wrote, the original guitarist for Sunset Rub Down. Because um, it's such a guitar-heavy song, and so Jordan Coop was just like, "Screw it, I'm going to learn it, the whole thing. I'm not going to reinterpret it." And uh, you know, shout outs to both Jordans for uh, both doing great work in that way. And uh, yeah, it's fun to. Tr I think it's appropriate in that song that I can no longer hit the high notes because it was <laughs> a song that I wrote and recorded like. 15 years ago now so when we were doing it i was like, like feeling like oh that's i can't hit that note anymore but that something feels right about that there's a it feels fine to i saw robert plant a few times over the last 10 years or so and he still sounds great but he can't hit those high notes anymore right. either <laughs> that's led zeppelin songs that he covers i mean it's just what happens, right? We get old. Our voices yeah. change. There's, it's cool because you get to trade. I can sing lower than I ever could before. I just can't hit the high, but now I can be ever so sultry when I need to. So uh, it's a trade-off. Yes, you can. Well, I heard you say recently that June is your favorite month and that you're excited to gather with some friends in person and celebrate the summer solstice. I think I remember hearing something about bobbing for apples and karaoke and body shots is that, is that yeah. on the horizon uh, <laughs> that, that's I, what happens when 
things are put. <laughs> yeah, so careful what I post, hey. <laughs> um, I think I was joking. We're going to have a bonfire on Saturday. You know, if, if friends want to, I'm, I, far be it for me to stop anyone from doing a body shot, uh, if that's what they want to do around the bonfire, or Bob for Apples or whatever. But um, no, I probably won't be setting up the twister board myself. Well, I imagine you're looking forward to gathering with some friends after the past many, many, many months. And yeah. I, I look forward to seeing you in person as well. So no, get likewise. that tour to come through Seattle. Yes, of course. Always. We'd, I would always love to come by and see you guys. And thank you for having me today. Oh, thank a- you so much. It's great to see you. And again, so great to hear this new record and see you performing these songs with other musicians. Thanks, Cheryl. Thanks, Spencer. Glad to be here. And thanks to all of our wonderful listeners for joining us here live on KEXP at Home. Don't forget you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure that you don't miss any of the fun. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.